Hey there, it's Walter here, and I want to share with you a couple of tools. I get a lot of questions from traders who ask me about the open position ratios, which I like to pay attention to. And first of all, a couple of misconceptions. I don't use these to get into trades. I use these numbers here to indicate the strength of a trend. And that's really it. Um, the reason why I use IG markets is because they have so many markets here available to you. Like I have yet to take a trade on the Hungary 12, <laughs> but if I wanted to, I would, I would have some pretty good information there, right? So, and, and lots of great pairs here, like the CAD Swiss and other pairs that you're just not going to get if you look at other data from Awanda or what have you. Also, it's updated every 10 minutes, so that's really good because it, it's up to date and I, I know kind of what's going on here and whether or not um, it's changed recently, okay? And so, and, and these guys don't move the market. I know they don't move the market. That's why I go against them. All, this is what we know about these guys. These are the retail traders that mostly lose money, depending on the estimate, it's somewhere between 79 to 95% of the retail traders are losing money. They're also buying when a downtrend kicks in, the market's trending downward and they buy, or if there's an uptrend, they start to sell. And this is almost universally the case, not quite. About one out of 11 trends uh, they'll actually be on the right side, but most of the time they go against it. And if you think back to when you first started trading, you probably did the same thing. So I use it as a strength of trend indicator and nothing more than that. I still need to have a trendy kangaroo tail, a squeeze play, a whammy, a moolah, a big shadow or whatever, a pogo, or whatever setup I like to use, or what I see on the chart, that's my trigger to get into the trade. All I use these for is to make sure I'm in the right side of the right direction and I know how strong the trend is. So for example, right now, I would say, look, the Euro Aussie or even the, uh, the Pound Swiss is in a very strong trend. And we use these, by the way, if you want to learn more about this, you can go to the Small Account Big Profits course where we use these numbers, for example, to get in a sell trade on the Pound Swiss, to get in a buy trade on the Euro Pound. Uh, or, or or sell the pound pound yen or whatever. The reason why I'm in these trades is because they're trending and because the numbers have shown me. So it's very valuable information. Number two is people say, well, why don't you use the commitment of traders from the uh, CFTC? And the reason why is, first of all, it only comes out once a week. And second of all, it doesn't really... It, it, so that, that's a big deal to me because I want to know where are the traders right now? Also, um, it's, it's, the data is, I don't, I understand why people use this data. I would rather, I find that the losing traders are a better flag for me, a better sign than the winning traders. And you can certainly go in here and, or, you know, some people use this to see what the commercials are doing, where, where's the volume pushing in. Because you get data here from several different sources. You get data from the small traders, the big speculators, such as um, funds and institutions, and also the commercial traders, which is, are the businesses that are in the, in the futures market. So the thing I would say about this to keep in mind is that if you're going to use this, it's a very different tool than this one. So, and this one is just, you can just Google IG markets, open position ratios for, and then put the currency pair in and you'll find any of this stuff. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is that this is very different to sentiment data. Sentiment data is very different. So when you go to IG markets, you look at sentiment, um, keep in mind, the, the, this is good, like this sentiment data is good, but a lot of times sentiment data isn't equal to trade data. Like it's not open positions. So right now it says 51% of the market are is long, the euro. So if I go to my euro here, I see 51% is long, right? So that's good sentiment data. Sometimes it's not actually the trades that they're giving you. They're just giving you people's opinion. Well, that that's no good to me. I want to know who's long what. So the yen, 72% of the traders are long. So what does that mean? Well, it means the yen's probably in a downtrend. Um, where is the yen here? Well, 
I'll go to my other, my other uh, trade here so you can see. Here's the end. The end's going down. The end's, the end broke out and it's been going down. So that's why we see all these traders going long. So the most important thing here, and again, if you want more information about the small account big profits course, where we get into this and we use these data to identify what sort of trends are running, you can go to the link below this video or just go to bigprofitscourse.com. Bigprofitscourse.com, there's a letter there that'll tell you all about what we're doing there with the, the little thousand dollar account. Basically, I have 500 bucks in this one and I get 500 bucks in this one and we're just building this up to 100 grand. That's, that's really all we're doing. So now the last thing I wanna talk about here is another thing that you may run across. And there, there are similar ones kind of like this that you'll find. And that is the fear and greed index. Now this is put out by CNN and this is, has a, a very different focus. This is basically, look, you can see here, it's got, you know, options here, the momentum on the moving average and all this stuff. Really what they're telling you is the global situation. All of these markets are correlated. We know this. I've run, I used to run a, uh, correlation. I used to feed in data and run correlations basically on a neural network to try and predict the USDN. And, uh, and what I found was fascinating. It wasn't really that that was that, you know, it wasn't really that useful, the neural network in predicting the, the movements of the yen. But what was interesting was, you know, were the lessons that, that I came up with. I know now how correlated the DAX is to the Hang Seng. And how correlated the Dow is to the ASX in Australia, for example, the world is very small. And what we know it, by looking at this is whether or not people are very greedy or fearful. So at the time of recording this right now, you can see here, there's extreme fear in the markets. And what that means is um, the markets, everyone's scared and what's, the markets are probably going to go up. So when you see that it's sort of like my contrarian trend indicator here, when this is all red here, because it's because most people are going long and the same thing with the fear and greed index. If you see this in extreme fear, that's a great time to be buying. If you see extreme greed, that's a great time to get ready for a short, you know, whatever. And this is mostly focused on uh, indices like the S and P and all that, but it's, it's really a great barometer of how, how risky are the market participants right now? How scared are they? And once they get into um, fear here, it usually means it's a, you're going to find some pretty good prices, especially in the share world. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing to keep in mind here as a, as a currency trader is when you see this uh, a lot of uh, fear kick in, typically the yen will get strong. So what happens is, this is the dollar yen here. Um, here's the, I'll give you the Aussie yen right here. So the dollar yen, the Aussie yen, both going down. The pound yen, I've got a couple of trades on the pound yen. So this is normal. It's pretty normal that when there's the euro yen, when the markets get really scared, the money floods back into Japan because so many people have taken their loans in yen and so when they freak out, they've got to pay back their loans. And what that does is it inflates the currency over in Japan. It's kind of weird. And if you think out of it on the surface, though, it doesn't make sense. But when you consider the fact that that's where basically the world's bank is, is in Japan, um, that's why fearful markets and when traders, speculators, market participants get scared, um, the yen will, will increase in value, which means go down. So the chart goes. So when these yen charts go down, that means that the yen is actually getting strong. Okay, so hopefully that helps. I just wanted to share with you all of these different things that you can use to figure out sentiment, open positions, and use them as a proxy for trend strength, which is basically what I do. If you like to use these in the trades or see us do it in the trades, you can join us at Small Accounts Big Profits. You can just go to bigprofitscourse.com and that will tell you all about the course. Okay, I wish you happy trading. We'll see you in another video.